And McGrady gets us going, sending it down to the railway end of the ground. Coleman it was who gave it away immediately. The diamond, he was able to pick up Coleman who trailed him through. Cut out ball across the face of the uh, decoy runner and it's Mark McGaw who's going to play it now just outside his quarter. Topper went to ground of his own volition but he was able to get up and scamper another five metres up the ground. Manala's number 10 is Robbie Kearns. Bit of concern in the background, Ray, for a Canterbury player who hasn't moved. Manala plays milling around him. A little bit of loose ball there for Canterbury, but Craig Poehler mount up. He does fine. One of about seven metres. Lamb, and again the sound of Kelvin Jeff's whistle, which is a good effort for a player playing in a side that's on nine points. The kick from Gavin Hill. Ah, oh, sweet. Beautiful kick, never left the line. And Canterbury, they grab the first points and lead by two points to nil. Raper scurries away from dummy half. Good gain in ground. Puts Canterbury on the uh, on the back move. Topper it away with a short ball for Diamond. Centre of the ground. About 20 metres out. And at the sound of the whistle gives the penalty this time to Cronulla Southern. Mitch Healy now, and as you see it, it goes straight between the uprights. Straight over the dot, and that's the equaliser. Canterbury and Cronulla locked together at two points all after 12 minutes of play. Straight up and down is uh, Michael Porter as a footballer. Nothing flash, but gets through a hell of a lot of hard work. Ken Ebb. 32 metres out for the kick. He's put it out on the full, so as I was talking about opportunity, Canterbury worked for five tackles to get it. Now they've got it. Can they do something with it? Polamata, Lamb, picked up off his bootlaces. Polamata, they're doing plenty of passing. There's the siren put in the air by Brokenshire. Lamb picks it up. Oh, well, you wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it. Terry Lamb has scored under the uprights the up and under from Mark Brokenshire and Canterbury banks down have scored as the siren sounds Terry Lamb to Craig Polamounter it went to probably the most unlikely of them all Mark Brokenshire for the kicking duty Lamb followed through he got the most magical bounce you'll ever see and he picks up four points right on half time Look at that bounce on Chris Quinn, would you? And it bounces straight into the chest of Terry Lamb. And Canterbury pick up a try right on half time. Lamb will take the conversion of his own try. Well, we keep talking about that vital period before half time. And here it is again in evidence. Well, Cronulla Sutherland must be thinking that nothing's going to smile on them. Right in front for Terry Lamb. No problems for this uh, Canterbury champion. Well, what a freakish way to finish the half, Tony Ray. Yeah, but you make your own luck, don't you? You know, they put the high ball up. Plenty of competitive chases there from Canterbury and the old master, Terry Lamb, came up with a great try. Ball carried back by Coleman. Very good kick there from Craig Polamounter. Was in a little bit of trouble with the pressure coming through, but able to get a good 50, 60 metre kick in. Was that a mistake made? Yes, it is. Well, a crucial mistake, and I wouldn't be at all surprised. Well, here's Gillies. Oh, gee. Oh, what about the knee? Big knee went in there. Well, we could have some troubles here. Terry Lamb with this attempted penalty. 24 metres out, almost in front. Flags go up. Canterbury extending their lead. 10 points to two now. That's the fifth tackle. Lamb signals that he's going to kick the bomb to his outside man. He goes to the ground instead. In behind the post will be cleaned up. 
Jerry Lamb was taken late, in my opinion, by Ken Ebb, the uh, Cronulla lock. But and Ebb is down injured. There's the replay. Cronulla's going to have to score a couple of times. Lamb, he adds the two points to the Canterbury tally. And the Doggies, they lead the Sharks by ten points to two. Polamata. McGrady standing up in the line. This is Maguire. It's no use you and McGrady just standing and passing. He's got to start running the football. He's the most explosive player on the field. And he's got to start using his talents. Lamb. He kicks ahead for himself. Simon Gillies gets another kick in. Knocked on by Cronulla. Advantage applies. Peach gets it away to Reardon. And Reardon gets a try. Reardon scores for the Canterbury side. Well, if that last penalty didn't wrap up proceedings, that try has 16 points to two to Canterbury. Terry Lamb again involved, saw that there was nobody sweeping behind the line, put the little grubber kick in. He had a man outside in support in Simon Gillies. He got to the football before the big number 10 for Cronulla could do so. That's where the ball needed to be cleaned up by the fullback Chris Quinn. But look at that, some support there. Steve Reardon crosses for the try, but good work from Geordie Pooch to be there. And put this back down to Mark McGaw's spilled pass about uh, three tackles ago. Terry Lamb's a genius. He didn't worry about the chip, just put the one through. Gillies did extra well, and Reardon backs up. Canterbury, 16-2 and doing it easily now. Try scorer Steve Reardon joined the Bulldogs from down in the Murrumbidgee Riverina area. He spent quite a bit of time out. And that kick just, just wide of that upright. No addition to the score. Canterbury leading Cronulla by 16 points to two. Canterbury rucking the ball away from their 22 line. Maguire, Peach, Colorado, Lamb, Patmore. Now, Williams. Speed to burn. McGrady. McGrady's outside him. McGrady's gone inside the quarter. Look at Eddinghausen, but McGrady's in to score. Well, some great piece of play there from the Canterbury back line, and what a man to finish it off. McGrady in full flight. Eddinghausen certainly coming across in great cover defence, but the man just had too much speed. But some excellent work done at the far end of the field by their inside backs. Here's the ball from Terry Lamb. The pass from Pat Moore to Williams was a beauty, and he positioned his man beautifully outside. McGrady, a very fluent motion. There's E.T. coming across, but McGrady scores in the corner, ending a very good backline movement. I think it was that player, Speechley, who heard there. He went in on a player he didn't have to. Lovely pass from Pat Moore. Williams did the right thing, and this is shades of the first test of fire, and uh, Eddinghausen, and unfortunately, on this occasion, E.T. couldn't get McGrady. Good to see this man back on the field. There was some concern about him earlier. And around the corner, it's oh, it turned left, it turned right, but it's no goal for Gavin Hill. And Canterbury leads by 20 points to two in Saturday Night League. Gillies. Knocked down by Scott Tronk. Topper comes up with it for the Sharks. Been very impressed with the uh, Canterbury second rowers tonight in Tronk former West and uh, Brisbane player and also there's another mistake it's been a mistake upon the goal once again on the Sharks McGrady Pat Moore in and away from top up puts the foot down uses the fend here comes Eddinghausen again this time he finds the target and they'll go wide because they've got big numbers McGrady looking to go there's the short ball Geordie Peets under the post as easy as you please the Canterbury go further in front, 24 points to two. Up the far end of the field, he opened up the play for Pat Moore, and then McGrady read that there was an easy run there for Geordie Poots. Again, the Cronulla defence just didn't reform in time. And an easy try and an easy conversion kick. There he is, Geordie Poots came on his replacement, the big smile on the face. Taken by Gavin Hill from right in front, only 14 metres out. And uh, no problems, further addition to the score line for Canterbury Bankstown to lead now by 26 points to two inside the last two minutes. And again, you'll think they'll be forced to go for the high kick. Well, Rape has gone for the little kick over the top. No pressure at all on you and McGrady. And he's away down the sideline. McGrady 
outside the quarter way mark, trying to link up with the runners. They did well there, didn't try the, the silly pass. But I'm sure that Chris Anderson will be very happy more with the score line, not allowing Cronulla to score against them. A try across their line as they've gone wide again. They might run in another try. That's Dallas away. Dallas, Borton is after him. He misses him. Young Dallas, he's going to go in and score. That'll be a big thrill for the boy. Called into the game after only 60 seconds. And there's Chris Anderson applauding. Why not? He threw this kid in there after one minute. Wouldn't have had time to mentally prepare himself to get into this game. And he scored a try in the last minute. 30 points to two. Big performance from Canterbury. Cronulla going into this game with the worst attacking record. That hasn't improved. And they've gone from one side of the field to the other. But good work the... inside again from Polamounter. But just look at the Cronulla offence there, Peter. Not forming up. They're only covering half the, half the field. How are they supposed to stop the Canterbury runners? They just can't do it. And a great effort by that young Blake. Good to see him. Probably his first grade debut tonight. Finished it off very well. And there we see the final pass thrown. Borton coming across. Couldn't get the ankle tap. Good speed, the winger. President's Cup winger played earlier this evening. And tries to improve the position a touch. 24 metres out. Well, you were chasing me. Gavin Hill's kick turning around. No goal. No addition. There's the siren. 30 points to two in favour of Canterbury. It was a grind early. A grind for 39 minutes, in fact. Canterbury got that try right on half time. And then the second half, it was all downhill for the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs against Cronulla. Winning the match by 30 points to two.